Hi, this is Miss Logan. Today I will be discussing kinematics equations and we'll just be talking about this in the horizontal or the x direction. Before we begin talking about the kinematics equations, I want us to focus on how we read word problems in physics. Word problems are sometimes overwhelming, we sometimes look at them and get very overwhelmed and sometimes don't know where to start. So make sure you copy down this list for your notes so that when you're doing word problems you can follow it. So the first thing you're going to do is read the problem. So I know this might seem obvious, but I watch a lot of students who just look at the problem and don't actually read it. After you read it once, go back and read it again and underline important information. Next, you're going to write down your knowns and unknowns. And we'll talk about in a couple moments how we know what is what. Next, you're, you're going to determine which equation to use from our kinematics equations. Then you're going to rearrange the equation to solve for your variable if that's needed. Six, you're going to plug in your numbers with units. Seven, you're going to do your math. And finally, you're going to write your answer with units and circle it. So as we go through word problems, I'll model how I do this. And this is the same format you should be following in class. All right, so from a previous flipped lesson, we talked about velocity and acceleration. Okay, so velocity is the change in displacement over time. We can also say that this is distance over time. We also have acceleration, which is a change in velocity over time. Okay, so even though we have our four very important kinematics equations, we still may need to come back and use these. So don't forget about them. Keep them in mind. All right, so when we're talking about motion, we're going to be using our kinematics equations. So remember, kinematic is really just another word for motion. Okay. And these equations are going to define how motion is going to work. Okay, so I'm going to get started by just going through these equations with you so that we can all understand what they mean. All right, so let's talk about what the individual variables mean. Okay, so for our first equation, we actually have five. Um, this first equation is a rewritten version of the velocity equation. Okay, so I can actually write this out a little bit better. So I could say delta x equals v0 t. Okay, now let's define what each of these variables mean just in general. So delta x is my distance or displacement, t is my time. A is my acceleration, V0 is my initial velocity. Now you may see me also put VI, same exact thing. We also have our final velocity, which we can just call V, or I like to call it v, VF. So that's our final velocity, okay? Now let's dive a little deeper exploring these equations. All right, so I'm actually not going to be talking about the first one, um, and I'm going to be adding in another equation. So that's delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 times t. All right, so let's look through these equations and figure out what they have and they don't have. Okay, this is how we're going to determine which equation to use. So I'm going to write yes, we have that variable. No, the variable isn't in there. So in our first equation, I have velocity final, velocity initial, A and T. Which one don't I have? I do not have delta X. Okay, so if I'm looking for delta X or I am given delta X, this is not the equation that I should be using. All right, next one. In this equation, I have delta x, we can actually just make this delta x, um, I have v0, I have t and a. What don't I have? I do not have vf. So if I have vf in a problem or looking for it, I'm not going to use this equation. Next one, I have vf, vo, a, and delta x. What don't I have? I do not have t. And lastly, for the equation I added, we have delta x, vf, vi, and t. What 
don't I have? I do not have acceleration. Okay, so this chart is going to be essential for us actually using our kinematics equations in word problems. All right, so I'm going to do two sample problems with you, and we're going to focus on setting up the problem. All right, so a car accelerates from rest to 5 meters per second squared. What is the velocity of the car after 18 seconds? So I read it, and I underlined what was important. So if it says from rest, that always means V0 equals 0. If they don't give you something for the velocity initial, chances are it's 0. And accelerates to 5 meters per second squared. Let's write down what we know. So we know V0 is 0. We know A is 5 meters per second squared. And we know my time is 18 seconds. So for these problems, you should always have three variables that you know. Now what am I looking for? I'm looking for VF. All right, so go to that chart that we just went through. And we have velocity initial, velocity final, A and T. So which equation do I need to use? Well, I don't have delta X, so I need to use my VF equals VI plus AT equation. Now I'm solving for VF, so I do not have to rearrange. All I need to do is plug in my numbers. So 0 plus 5 times 18 to get us 40 meters per second. All right, so a similar problem. A motorcyclist is moving with a velocity of 5 meters per second. He slows down the acceleration of negative 3 meters per second squared. How fast is he traveling after 4 seconds? All right, I read it and underlined. Now I need to write down my variables. So he's moving initially with a velocity of 45 meters per second. He slows down, okay? So my acceleration is negative. Acceleration can be negative because how else would I slow down? And after four seconds, we need to figure out how fast he's traveling. So we're also looking for VF in this equation. So I'm gonna use the same equation as before. Um, I do not have delta X, so this is my only equation I can use. So I have 45 plus negative 3.5 times 4. So remember, I'm doing my multiplication first. And for my answer, I'm going to get 31 meters per second. So we're going to practice a lot with this in class, and we're going to go through these equations again, how to read word problems. So make sure you take notes, and you also complete the form.